welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. Together we will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we calculate whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end we analyze and look at the financial ratios. The company we're going to look at is Datadog. And Datadog is a monitoring service for cloud scale applications providing monitoring of servers, databases, tools, and services through a SaaS-based data analytics platform. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $22.5 billion. So it's a large cap stock since its market cap is above $10 billion. They're trading at $75.28. They went down 16% today. $15, that's a big drop. Next we're going to pull the free cash flows and free cash flows is the way you value a company. You have to estimate the future free cash flows and then discount that number back to today's value. That's exactly what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And we also need the net income for the model. Net income is on the income statement. That's a profit and loss for the business. And this is accounting profit and loss, so it's a lot different than the free cash flows because there's a lot of non-cash items on the income statement. Now let's pull the revenue, which are the sales for each year. And their revenue has increased a lot. It went from 100 million to 424 million. So more than four times. So they have amazing growth. If they can continue that, they'll be a really big company and a big competitor in this space. Let's look at the capital structure. They have no debt, which is great. You don't see many new companies with no debt. Let's get the cost of equity. We need the beta. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. And they don't have a beta listed. I'm going to put a beta of 1.5. Let's go back to the balance sheet, get their current assets. We need this to calculate the current ratio later. That's $900 million. And let's see what current assets they have cash of 773 million and net receivables 102 million. So they have really solid current assets because cash is the best asset. We also need current liabilities to calculate the current ratio. That's 200 million dollars. This is how much money the company owes within the next 12 months. Let's see what that is. Accounts payable of 15 million dollars. That's the money the company owes to its creditors and suppliers. Accrued liabilities. So crude liabilities are expenses the company incurs, but has not yet paid those expenses. It will pay at a later time, so books it at a crude liability. Deferred revenue of $134 million. This is the best liability to have. These are the revenues the company has received, but it has not yet delivered a product or service yet. When it does actually deliver the product or service, then it will book those revenue onto the income statement and take it out of deferred revenues. Other current liabilities of 1.8 million, that's a pretty small number. Let's look at their equity, that's 782 million. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's total assets minus total liabilities. Let's see what that's broken down to. 3,000 of common stock. They have negative 123 million of retained earnings. This is the earnings that are not paid out in dividends. So it's the money the company has left over in order to grow its business and pay down its debt. But it's negative, so it's operating at a loss. But it is a younger company, so the goal is that they would be profitable in the future. Most companies do report lots of losses in the beginning and eventually make profits. I like to invest in companies that show me profits, not losses, but I'm a value investor. Accumulated other comprehensive income of 133000 This is unrealized gains of $133,000 on some of its investments. Unrealized means it has not sold the security yet, so it hasn't realized the gain. Just like when you hold the stock, you don't make any money until you sell the stock. Even if it's up tons of money, you only make money when you sell it, when you realize it. Let's go back to the income statement, get their operating income. That's negative $20 million. So they're losing $20 million on an operational business. Let's look at the capital structure. They're 100% equity. The cost of equity is 14%. And that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. 
We discounted those numbers back to today's value using the weighted average cost of capital that's here in green. And we get a value of the company of $15 billion. We divide that by 299 million shares and we get an intrinsic stock price of $49. They're trading at $75, so it's trading at a 53% premium. So it's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street values the company at. They're at $46 a share, so they're also saying the company's a sell. So it's really hard to value companies that report negative net income every year and numbers that are not too consistent. So how to use an alternative type of model, and it's kind of guesswork. It's, it's almost always guesswork, even when you have information. Nobody can predict the future. There's no crystal ball. But we just use the information we have. This is not the best information to go on, I, so I have to base it on a lot of factors. The growth of the company the past four years, the industry they're in. Let's see what the stock is been trading at. So it looks like it IPO'd in September or maybe a little before September of 2019. And it started out at around $40 and it's been sitting there for several months. And then it really shot up a few months back. So investors aren't putting money to the company based on their financials because obviously they're providing no returns. But their revenue is going up quite nicely. So I think people are looking towards the future and this company continuing to grow its revenue and hopefully its profits. Let's look at the financial ratios to see if we get more information. They have a negative PE and they have a terrible price of sales and price to book. So PE is stock price over earnings per share. Earnings per share is net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, therefore they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To get sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. So they're providing a price of sales of 53.1. I like to see below 2.5, so that means investors are willing to pay $53 for $1 of sales. So at this point, they're not providing a lot of sales for the stock price. But like I said, it's a newer company and this just goes with the territory. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To get book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. And their price to book is 29. I like to see below 3.5. So investors are willing to pay $29 for $1 book value. They have a really high current ratio, no ROE. So current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. So they are sitting on a lot of cash. ROE is net income over equity. They have really no net income, so therefore they have a negative ROE. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them with similar companies. I've done videos on Intuit, Canaxis, which is a Canadian company, Mogo, and the Trade Desk, all in the same industry as Datadog. And in terms of PE, Datadog's negative, so we can't look at their PE, but everybody has a bad PE in this space. Price to sales, they are worse than the average. Price to book, they're a little worse than the average. They are better than the average in current ratio, but you don't need a 4.5. Uh, 2 is more than appropriate. They are better than ROE at 0% just because the average is negative because Mogo has such a big negative. Debt, they have no debt, which is impressive. Mogo is all debt, and the other companies are pretty much no debt. So I'm not sure why Mogo needs so much debt to run their business. And in terms of market cap, they are a decent sized company, Datadog, for showing no earnings, they are at $22 billion. So when you invest in a company like Datadog, you are kind of gambling, and I'm not sure if the return is going to be that great. I'd much rather invest in a secure company. If you want to gamble, I guess play options, but I'm sticking to companies with good fundamentals. Thanks for watching the video.